G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is the counting principle. And this is a way of counting up our various combinations really, really quickly. So this is the start of a series of videos where we're going to be looking at combinations and permutations, which is pretty much a, a nice mathematical way of saying working out the number of different ways that things can be arranged. For instance, uh, how many different ways, how many different combinations could you have in a combination lock? Uh, or how many different ways could lotto numbers come out? Or this one, for instance, say I had four books. Yeah, one, two, three, four books. And I was thinking to myself, oh, how many different ways could I arrange these on the bookshelf? So instant, for instance, I could put them in this order. They're blue, black, red, or green. Or I could put them blue, black, uh, green or red or I might think the red one first and then the black one and then the green one and then the blue one and you might then think to yourself well how many different combinations could you have and this is what this combinations and permutations start to look at and more specifically today this is what this counting principle will be looking at okay and we're going to be using this in some later parts of what we're going to be doing so we're going to explain this by going through an example and we're going to start by imagining I'm choosing my outfit for the day so anyway I look in the cupboard and the first thing I look down at is my shoes and I'm trying to decide what shoes I have to wear I have black shoes and I have blue shoes okay and then the next thing I've got to decide is what colour pants I'm going to wear for that day. And because I'm a funky sort of guy, I have green pants and I also have orange pants. And then the next thing I'm going to decide is what shirt I'm going to wear. Okay, so I think to myself I have a red shirt, I have a blue shirt, and I also have a black shirt. And so how many different combinations of outfits, how many different combinations of clothes can I wear out of these shoes, pants and shirt combinations could I make out of that? So this is where we use this counting principle to work out. But first off what we're going to do is we're going to draw up a tree diagram. Now a tree diagram pretty much lists up all the different combinations that are possible. So we look at all the different decisions that we make. So the first decision we make is what shoes I'm going to wear. Now we could either choose that I'd be wearing black or I'd be wearing blue. So we have a different branch goes off to each of those. The next thing we decide is what colour pants. So, so for each of these I might then decide I'm going to wear either green, so this one I could, I could wear black and then black shoes and then green pants or blue shoes and then green pants or I could use wear orange pants with either of these decisions. The third thing I then do is look at shirts. I could wear three different colour shirts for all of these, yeah? So I could wear a red shirt, okay, or I could wear, you guessed it, blue, or I could wear black. And so what this tree diagram does is it lists off all the combinations and what you'll see is if you count the ends of the branches here you see how many different combinations we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 combinations. 12 different combinations of outfits I could wear. And you're thinking to yourself, well that's, that's pretty handy dandy and you'll, you'll look pretty funky if you are, <laughs> go very, wear various ones. But you might then think, is there a faster way of doing that without drawing out this tree diagram? And there is. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Because I have two pairs of shoes, two pairs of pants, and three shirts. And the very simple way of doing that is if I just multiply these through. Two times two is four times three equals twelve. So say for instance I uh, varied this up and all of a sudden now I have six pairs of shoes, I have seven pairs of pants and I have 12 pairs of shirts to choose from. How would I go about rather than drawing one of those tree diagrams which would take ages and to be honest about it would be rather squishy and not very fun to draw. How would I go about doing this? Well I just multiply this through. So how many different outfits could I have? Six times seven times 12. Okay so that multiplied together Mate, I have 502 different combinations of clothing I could wear. Okay, so that's a really, really easy way of doing this. Um, and I could write out a rule for that, but I think you really probably just get that. You just get your number of different combinations and then you multiply. So what about you try some? So what about we have a menu, okay? You go in a restaurant, we have a menu, and on this menu we have entrees and there are four of these and then after the entrees you have the mains 
and on the main course there are 10 different main course dishes and then on the desserts we have des three different types of desserts and I could ask you then how many different three course dinner combinations could you make off this so I'll get you to work it out I reckon you need probably I reckon you should have already worked it out because I know you're all great at multiplying and I think what you do is you go 4 times 10 is 40 times 3 okay that's going to be 120 different combinations so okay a bit of a harder example now so say we have a lotto um, where we have six numbers so six numbers and I'll draw them here one two three four five six numbers and they get chosen from one you know, balls numbered from one to forty five okay and now I want to know is how many different combinations do we have here? So this is a bit of a harder one. And the way that we do this is as follows. So I've got the slots here, and this is a really good thing to draw up at the start. There's six different balls we're choosing. I've drawn six different slots. So there's going to be six different things we're multiplying. So the first slot here, the first ball we choose out, okay, we have 45 balls, 1 to 45. You might think to yourself, well, of the first ball we choose out, we have 45 possibilities, anywhere from 1 to 45 that we choose. For the second ball that we choose out, how many possibilities do we have? Well, one of these balls has been chosen out now, so we only have 44 balls left. So, there'll be 44 different possibilities. Okay. What about the next one? We'll have 43 possibilities, 42 possibilities. The next one had 41 possibilities because the ball's gone. And then because that ball's gone, then the next one we have 40 possibilities. So how many different combinations do we have? And so you might look at this and think, oh, okay, okay, how we work that out? We're going to multiply. That's a lot of numbers to multiply. We have the number of 5,864,443,200 combinations. So one other one, and this one is a bit more of where I come from. I come from Victoria in Australia, and we have well, up until very recently, we used to have license plates that were like this. We would have three letters, say a letter, 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 and it was followed by three numbers. And I've been to different places around the world, and I've seen that everyone has different types of uh, license plates, but this is the ones we have, and you could work this one out for your own license plates where you're from. So, I want to know how many different combinations we have that we could have here. I mean, obviously, it's going to be affected a bit. Um, they don't like to have rude words and that sort of deal on license plates, but we're not going to take that into consideration. You know, we're not going to have POO and poo or anything like that. Um, so how many different combinations license plates could we have? So you might think to yourself, okay, the first one, they could choose any letter. There's 26 letters in the alphabet, so there's 26 possibilities for that first letter. And then the next one, they could choose, once again, any letter because there's still 26 letters. You could have A, and then you could have another A. So we're not worried about repeats here. And then the next one, you could also choose 26 letters out of 26 letters. Now numbers, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10 different possibilities. 10 different, and 10 different for the next ones. So how do we work out, how do we count up all these combinations really quickly? Well, we multiply them through. So 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10 and the answer to this is there is 17 million five hundred and seventy six thousand combinations so you could work that out on a license plate where you're from okay and, and, and however they work them out because they do vary but I'm just gonna finish with one last thing on this which is this idea so say what about if we worried about a license plate where we couldn't repeat any letters or numbers, okay? Every letter and number had to be unique. How would you work that out differently? It's not a huge thing to do. Because of the first number of letters that came out, you would have 26. Now, say it was any number one of those letters that you took out, it would only leave 25 letters for the next possibility. And the next one, because now you've got rid of these two, would only leave 24 possibilities. Okay, so for the numbers, we have 10 to start off with. And you guessed it, the next one we would only have 9, the next one we'd only have 8. And to work out 
the number of combinations if no repeats were available so it would be to send a multiply there and so you see that slight variance there and that takes it down from 17 million to 11 million 232,000 combinations anyway hopefully you found this video informative um, it's fairly intuitive I find a lot of this stuff uh, but it will get a little bit harder when we start to get into the harder combinations and permutations and I'm sure some people are going to come out with some really gnarly sort of uh, <laughs> comments and questions so anyway hope you found that good see you next time bye